good afternoon friends in last in previous lecture i discussed the culture sorry cultivation of viruses today we will see the remaining part of this cultivation of viruses that is first inoculation into embryonated eggs here we can see the image of what the image of cheek embryo inoculation we will see the inoculation into embryonated eggs here in image we can see the cheek embryo cheek embryo inoculation how to inoculation is carried out it shows presence of amniotic cavity shale albumin alanotic cavity yolk sac coriolanotic membrane then shell shell membrane then air sac then amniotic inoculation yolk sac inoculation and alanotic inoculation this amniotic inoculation influenza virus or pump virus mum virus then yolk sac inoculation or simple simplex virus then alantoic alantoic inoculation that is influenza virus mum virus newcastle disease virus and avian adeno virus we will see explanation the god pusher in the year 1931 first used the embryonated hands and eggs for the cultivation of viruses keep in mind it is important for mcq what is yes, what i am saying see here the god pusher in in the year 1931 first used the embryonated and embryonated hands egg for the cultivation of virus then the process of cultivation of virus in embryonated eggs is depend upon the type of eggs which is used yes it is depend upon what that is it is depend upon the type of eggs which is used then viruses are inoculated into cheek embryo of 7 to 12 days old then for inoculation eggs are first prepared for cultivation for inoculation eggs are first prepared for cultivation the shell surface is first disinfected with iodine first the procedure for inoculation eggs are first prepared for cultivation the shell shell surface is first disinfected with iodine and penetrated with small sterile drill then after inoculation the opening is sealed with gelatin or the paraffin yes after inoculation the opening is sealed with gelatin or the paraffin and incubated at 36 degrees celsius for 2 to 3 days then after incubation the egg is broken yes after the incubation the egg is broken and virus is isolated from tissue of egg then viral growth and multiplication then the viral growth and the multiplication in the egg embryo is indicated by the death of embryo by the or by embryo cell damage or by the formation of typical form or the lesion on the egg membrane the egg membrane then viruses can be cultivated in various part of egg the viruses can be cultivated in various parts of egg like corio allantoic membrane allantoic cavity amniotic sac and yolk sac we will see yes the viruses can be cultivated in various parts of eggs for example or like coriolanotic membrane then allantoic allantoic cavity then amniotic sac and yolk sac we will see in detail one by one first coriolanotic membrane that is capital c a m that the inoculation is mainly for growing the pox virus then after incubation the visible lesion called pox are observed then this after sorry after incubation visible lesion are called pox and are observed and which is gray white area in transparent then herpes simplex virus is also grown then single virus give a single pox then this method is suitable for plaque studies yes this method is suitable for plaque studies then second that is allantoic cavity the inoculation is mainly done for 
the inoculation is mainly done for production of vaccine the inoculation is the mainly done for production of vaccine of influenza virus yellow fever and rabies then most of avian viruses can be isolated by using this method then third amniotic sac the inoculation is mainly done for amniotic sac the inoculation is mainly done for the inoculation is mainly done for primary isolation of influenza virus and the mumps virus then growth and replication of virus the growth and replication of virus in egg embryo can be detected by the growth and replication of viruses in egg embryo it can be it can be detected by hemagglutination assay hemagglutination assay then last that is yolk sac inoculation it is also simplest method for the growth as well as the multiplication of viruses yes yolk sac inoculation it is also simplest method for the growth as well as multiplication of virus then it is inoculated for cultivation of it is inoculated for cultivation of some viruses and some bacteria for example rickettsia then immune interference mechanism can be detected in most of avian virus we will see the advantages of in, in inoculation into implanted eggs and as well as disadvantages so what are the advantages first advantage why it is widely used method for isolation of virus and the growth of virus then second ideal substrate for the viral growth as well as viral replication then isolation and cultivation of many avian and few mammalian viruses then cost much less then it is easy for maintenance then less requirement of labor and then it is readily available then embryonated eggs it is readily available then sterile and wide range of tissue and fluid then they are free from contaminating bacteria and many latent viruses they are free from contaminating bacteria and many latent viruses specific and non specific factors of defense are not enrolled in embryonated eggs then widely used method to grow the viruses for some vaccine production then disadvantages of inoculation some viruses do not show the growth some viruses do not show growth on primary inoculation in the eggs then slight amount of bacterial contamination in the inoculum may kill the embryo then eggs may be contaminated with mycoplasma and the latent and the latent flow viruses which may interfere interfere with grown of other viruses then so this is all about the inoculation into embryonated eggs next we will see the cell culture that is or the tissue culture the first application of tissue culture in biology was by the is maintain the vaccinia virus in fragment of rabbit cornea then metland in 1928 used chopped tissue in nutrient media for the cultivation of vaccinia viruses then the turning point which made tissue culture the most important method for cultivation of viruses was the demonstration by anders wellers and robins in 19 in the year 1949 for the polio virus then the tissue culture of the tissue cultures of human or the animal cells are frequently used for the cultivation of viruses yes the tissue culture of what the tissue culture of human virus or the sorry tissue culture of human cell or the animal cells 
are frequently used for what the used for the cultivation of viruses there are mainly three types of tissue culture first organ culture then second explant explant culture and third that is cell culture then on the basis of their origin and the characteristics cell culture the on the basis of what their origin and the characteristics the cell culture are also classified into three types primary cell culture diploid cell culture and heteroploid cell culture yes there are three types of cell tissue culture organ culture explant culture and cell culture but on the basis of their origin and the characteristics cell culture are again classified or again divided into three types first primary cell culture second diploid cell culture it is also called as semi continuous cell line and third that is heteroploid cell heteroploid culture that is continuous cell line we will see one by one organ culture the organ culture are useful for the isolation of some viruses which appear to be highly specialized parasites of certain organs for example trachea trachea tracheal ring organ culture in is employed for the isolation of coronavirus then explant culture means tissue may be grown as a explant embedded in plasma cords this is not useful in virology in the past the adenoid tissue explant culture were used for the adenovirus then third that is cell culture this is very popular and useful technique this is very popular and useful technique routinely used to cultivation of viruses tissues are dissociated into components cells by the action of proteolytic enzymes such as trypsin and mechanical shaking the cells are washed counted and suspended in the growth medium and distributed in petri plates the cells are washed counted and suspended in growth medium and distributed in petri plates test tubes or bottles the cells adhere to the glass surface and grow out to form a monolayer sheet then on the basis of as i said earlier it is also divided into three parts primary cell culture diploid cell culture and third heteroploid cell culture in primary cell culture type these are normal cells which are derived from animal or the human cells they are able to grow only for limited time and cannot be maintained in serial culture and they are used for primary isolation of viruses they are used for the primary isolation of viruses and production of vaccine for example monkey kidney cell culture and human amnion neon cell culture then second diploid cell culture it is also called as semi continuous cell culture they are diploid and contain the same number of chromosomes as per as the parent cell they can be subcultured up to 50 times by serial transfer following and the cell and the cell strain is lost then they are used for the isolation of some fastidious viruses and the production of viral vaccine for example human embryonic embryonic leg strain then heteroploid cultures it is also called as continuous cell culture they are derived from cancer cell they can be serially cultured identically indefinitely they sorry they can be serially cultured indefinitely so named as continuous cell line why it is named as continuous cell line because they can be serially cultured indefinitely then they can be maintained either by serial subculture or by storing in deep freeze at 70 degrees celsius then 
due to derivation from cancer cell they are not useful for vaccine production due to the due to derivation from cancer cell they are not useful for vaccine production for example here that is human carcinoma of cervix cell line and hep2 that is human epithelioma of larynx cell line there are few example of susceptible cell line her nerve simplex vero hep2 that is human diploid virus or human immunoid there are few examples of viruses here we can see the viruses example of viruses then advantages of cell culture the it is relatively easy then it is broad spectrum it is cheaper and having good sensitivity then disadvantages of cell culture the process requires trained the process requires trained technician with experience in working on a full time basis then th next disadvantage state health laboratories and has host uh, the state health laboratories and hospital laboratories do not isolate and do not identify the viruses in clinical work then tissue or serum for analysis is sent to central laboratories to identify the viruses so what are the so there are two points that are remembering from the chapter that is first it is important for mcq first viruses are connecting link between what it is connecting link, link between the non living and living th things as they possess the both non living and living character living character second the pox viruses are this largest viruses and the parvo viruses are one of the smallest viruses then capsid within the enclosed nucleic acid is called as nucleocapsid then next the extracellular infection viruses particles is termed as a virion the virion consists of a nucleic acid and enclosed within the protein coat and this and this is called as capsid and the based on morphology of protein as a coat viruses may be of following types icosahedral cubical helical then polyhedral spherical and complex so this is all about this all about the chapter